Olay, please answer the question. <laughs> I, I love that. Just this, just the old, I'm an old white guy with a big bushy beard going, Olay! I, I love that. Hey guys, Zach Mars here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. So, in the last episode of Rise from the Ashes, which is, again, one of the longest chapters in the whole game, um, ever, uh, so, of course, so, we were able to get some video evidence of, of the fight between Bruce Goodman and, and Detect Sheriff Meekins, or whatever his name is, um, I know his name is Meekins, but I forget what his title is, but in any case, Oh, we got, we saw the fight between Officer Beacons and Bruce Goodman. We were able to determine that Bruce Goodman wasn't in fact who he said he was. And may, and also that the two places are connected. So we're going to be continuing with that line of thought in the trial ladder. Um, yeah, this is why it's the, it's so long. It's just three part. It's just every, every trial has been a two parter. That's, that's mainly what it's been. And in any case, let's move on and keep going. February 24, 12, 14 p.m. District Court, courtroom number nine. All right. All right, where is Officer Marshall? We had we had him brought in because we think he might be involved. This court will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lena Sky. Emma didn't come back. Oh, uh, and that's right. It's also connected to a previous serial killing somehow because all the victims in this case, all the people involved in this case, or were involved in the in the serial killing back then. I'm going to call the next witness to stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Mr. Jake Marshall himself. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man. You seem as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Uh, occasionally helping the elderly cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know. You're a patrolman. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you can hear the howling wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, Your Honor. Howling wind? I've never heard Edgeworth described that way to, before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime took place. Yes. Is this correct? Yes. According to the papers, partner. What do you mean? A desperado soul as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Yeah, probably. Please share with us your testimony of the day of the crime. In plain old English. Yeah, that would be best. All right, Officer Marshall, what you got for me? My job is to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at the si street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out on out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your attitude. Yeah, and also that testimony was vague as shit, so we need to... I can't... Uh, yeah, oh, okay. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Firing back an insult at the judge. That's brave. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprint activation locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint activation locks? What kind of newfangled doohickey are those? He's not being very helpful. No, he is not. Okay, well, this is going to be hell. <coughs> okay, we're not going to figure this out. He's not that good with machines or with following orders. We've established that considering he wandered off to get a drink at the time he was supposed to be guarding the evidence room. You know, you know, slacking off on the job. To something you're not supposed to do, ever. Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Thank you. Thank you for turning him loose to me. All right, day of the crime. Um, My job is to keep a wary eye on that bone orchard. And by bone orchard, you mean the evidence room. 
Let's just make sure everything... How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure no nothing moved in the security camera monitor. That room's so still, even time dies in there. I was just a caretaker and interred the recordings. You interred them? Videos are, are, of nothing aren't that useful. When the time would come, I would erase the tape. If nothing unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I erase the tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. Hmm. This guy's a flair for the dramatic, but this isn't going to do him any good. So in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Yeah, every six hours, so... But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. Yes, but on the day of the... You should be... <laughs> okay, this guy is just terrible at his job. Plain and simple, it's no wonder he was demoted. Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand. Don't disbrow, no, I know, let rules get in his way. No disbrows, I know, join the police force. So, Officer Marshall, on the day of the crime, just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. There was a rubber glove stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner, can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. Yeah, we've established this. You used to be a detective, so, you'd, so you've used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course. Back in the day, my day, the locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism. Sorry, partner. It, I ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite uh, incredible. Eh, kind of. Bikes are kind of... I, I mean, bikes are kind of simple, technology-wise. I, I, would, I would imagine it wouldn't be very hard to figure out how they work. The sensors on the locker handles cannot be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Not, now that he mentions it, Detective Gumshoe said something like that, too. At any rate, it doesn't seem like this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the crime took place? Hmm. If I remember right... I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. Hmm. Oh, I have the... But don't I have the... Check. Hmm. Well, what is ID number B, though? I, I don't think he would be the only... Hmm. What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. All right, fair enough. I have an angel steak lunches can beat that parlor's vognesepius pasta. Do you mean to tell us you abandon your police duties to eat some noodles? Yes. And, uh, the, everybody, I think we have esta fell established at this point that this guy just does not care about his job. In fact, it's a miracle he hasn't gotten fired, really. Not all of this, bro, as he tacos, partner. That's not what I meant. I hope this at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. This is usually where Edward says, Did you not want to raise... Oh, you raised this right here? Hmm. Hmm. Out of ammo, Officer Marshall? That's right, partner. Or as you call it, evidence. If you plan to pin me to this crime, then you'd better draw. Otherwise, you're just wasting my time. My steel horse is waiting to be carried my, my back west into the sunset. Hmm. One thing seems clear. Despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room, the witness doesn't appear to have seen anything. Texans don't take orders from anyone. Everyone knows that. Apparently, superiors don't. Okay, I have a trump card on my sleeve, so I best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I'd better pick up the ante. Hmm. Uh, well, I have his fingerprint, but where would I present it here? Okay, I've been thinking about this for a while. I I, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Um, there's the, there's, um, there's Goodman's ID. There's a, there's a couple of things that it could be, but I can't figure it out. Um, nothing I have that can, that might be able to stick. 
At least not that I know of. Well, let's go over all my evidence. I've got my attorney's badge, which is pretty much useless in this case. Um, we got Goodman's ID, which doesn't really have any evidence on it. Um, we... Hmm. Given it, this isn't helpful. This isn't helpful. This isn't helpful. This isn't helpful, I don't think. Alright, there's also, there's a strange fingerprint on there. I didn't notice that. There's a big handprint on, on his face. I didn't notice there, there was a big handprint on the blue badger's face. I didn't notice that before. Alright, I don't know how this could be helpful. I don't think it could be. This we already know was upside down. There's no evidence. Uh, parking lot with Edger's car. There's some blood. There's some blood, but not a lot. Uh, check. There's a shoe. There's a knife. Featured from SL9. No, uh, this is this just sex for blood. This isn't going to be helpful. IDs of all who entered the evidence room at two, on 221. <sighs> this, this is the only thing I can think of. There's a big unknown with that. Because there's just one in there that isn't on there. Do I need to look up a walkthrough? I may need to look up a walkthrough because I am stuck. I've been stuck for, a, I don't know, 30 minutes, I want to say at most. I'm going to look up a walkthrough and try and figure it out. Okay, so I am just supposed to play, so I am just supposed to um play his fingerprints in his third or fourth statement? Fourth or fifth, it says, according to the walkthrough. I looked it up. Okay, so one, two, three, four, presents, fingerprint. Objection. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? That is, you've been called in to testify like this. After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me down here. Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, a handprint. <sighs> listen, listen real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crypt. I pay my respects. That is, make my rounds one, about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. I only wish we were, were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. All right, we got we got our lead now. We're on we're on the track. What is? What's the meaning of this? Okay, we're back on track now. Your blood-stained fingerprints were at the crime scene. The blood was wiped away. However, a luminol cl test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall. Hmm. It seems to me there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I'm now. I'm confused. I take it you have an explanation, then, Officer Marshall. I sincerely doubt it, but about the bloodstained fingerprints? Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. Okay. All right, we're back on track now. I've got, I've got it back under control now. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. The murder touched the locker where my fingerprints was by chance. The blood stains, and this blood stain and the fingerprints are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See, I had nothing to do with it. Huh. Suspiciously enough, though. Hmm, the witness's explanation appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. Hmm. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. 
This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. I don't, well, I don't know why I switched to the Jake Marshall voice when I'm supposed to be talking like Phoenix right, but it, it, it happened, so here we are. Okay, like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. Press! Keep pressing until we find something. That's because you, how did you put it, pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. And yet you don't know how the evidence locker works. What? What do you mean? I mean, I mean what I said. That's the locker I used when I was a detective. The locker I still use. All that's in there now, though, is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently, his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker's programming. He must have been using the fingerprint lock all this time without ever knowing it. Huh. Found on, the ha pl found on a blade handprint on Marshall's own locker and the print has been wiped. Huh. Alright, well now we've got it up. Well, I'm just happened to be at the same place at the bloodstained handprint. If you say so. So then, what about the bloody handprint? Wasn't mine. It's no mystery. Please explain. My locker is covered with my fingerprints. I just so happens. The merch Oh, okay. What about, what else do you gotta say? I'm trying to, the chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that are not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get an overworld for me with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? Okay. The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Hmm. Unrelated? They're as different as night and day. Kinda like cereal and cereal. One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. He's right. Although seemingly alike, they're totally different. I don't see why what homonyms have to do with this. Hmm. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? Hmm. How do you know that? He shouldn't know that. I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain on the scene, thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found in Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get that the picture, partner? Uh-oh. The picture? This seal of blood. In the desert, it's just food for the buzzards. There's only one reality, and that's this. The security tape. So long as my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. There was a suspicious thing in there, though. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. I know what I'm looking for now. Please consider carefully whether you're going to where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? Hmm. Can we prove that he was in? What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Places you can't see. The camera's panning, panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. Hmm. If someone was familiar with the camera's position... They could leave the room without being caught on tape. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Shh, I know exactly where the evidence is. Very well. Allow me to point out to your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making the mistake. I know exactly what I'm looking for. I know exactly what it what what I'm looking for. 
All right, let's fast forward. We don't need to see any of this. I know exactly what I'm looking for. That's his locker over there. Doop, 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 doopy, doop, doop, a doop, a doop, doop. Why is this sticking out of your locker, sir? But yeah, that's it. Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The day is our short in Texas, and so is our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Very well. You can clearly be seeing this video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker shown in the video. Pause it. That locker with the white cloth sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why I was giggling, but eh, in any case. Oh, the white cloth, it's gone. <laughs> What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? I, it took me an hour, but I finally nailed the son of a bitch. <laughs> when the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. That suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at that time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. I nailed him. Order, order. It would seem that's the only... Hold your horses. Sorry, partner. But you got the wrong man. No. How? Okay. <sighs> so what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to, hide, needed to hide something, so he opened the locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. Hmm. Why is everyone staring at me like I'm a wanted man? Because the only way that works is if it uses your fingerprint. So the only one who could have opened it was you. This guy j isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. I hate to rain on your parade. But you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call you a bluff. You say I open the locker? Now prove it. Uh, a fingerprint sensor? We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. Well, what kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the, lock, the locks aren't that obvious. There's, there's even some people on the force who don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff. What do you have to say in eight words or less? I only got one word for you, partner. No! All right. He's, he got screwed. Order, order, order. Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Olay, please answer the question. <laughs> I, I love that. Just this, just the old, an old white guy with a big bushy beard going, Olay! I, I love that. What is he? What is he now? A bullfighter? That's right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest of, out from here. We can? Now look at the floor plans. There's no place for someone to hide the in the evidence room. Yet, Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. Hmm. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. 
Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? It's either the killer or the wit or the witness, so. Hmm. If I get this wrong, it's gonna be interesting. There's only one of two possible op options it could be, so. Officer Marshall was standing right here. Hmm. So Officer Meekins didn't notice him standing there. That's almost as credible as Meekins' warp theory. Your chances are empty, partner. Better reload. Now they're ganging up on me. Perhaps. You should think a little more about where Officer Marshall was. Officer Meekins should have seen him in the evidence room. That means the only place he could have been would be... Well then, let's hear it. Okay, it, it was one of the two, so. This one? There, but that's... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you, dressed up like Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective at the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. May I point out, though, that Officer Meekins did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified that Bond's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes? And how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me! Hmm. Something about the officer's story puzzles me. If the man had his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed it to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. Hmm. As you can see, the Secretary Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say to this, Officer Marshall? He's nervous. I, you can tell. He's nervous. You've got quite an imagination, partner. We've got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proven I dressed up as the victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't I can't say I care for your beard, but that you don't see me complaining. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're the one who couldn't take it the desert, desert heat. Ah, this can't be happening. It's, it's so obvious the one. What can I do? Uh-oh. It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. Oh, gr oh, great. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the basics. The basics? For me, that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try to think thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in the disguise. Oh, I shouldn't look for But rather, I should look for evidence that, that came about because he was in disguise. Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yeah, he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later if it had been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defensive argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps... 
Perhaps the video is the key to all of our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Hmm. Very well. Let's take another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show us what, why the witness had to open his locker. Why? Alright. This is going to be interesting, but why, 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 why? Hmm. Fast forward? I think I know why. It's because there was a big bloody stain on it when he came in. After he came in. That would be why. Yep. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman. And entered the evidence room, though I didn't know what to, what, to what end. Yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Megan's barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled the knife on him. However. Officer Megan's panicked. And the white cloth you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. You couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Hmm. Not bad, partner. He said that sarcastically, of course. All right, we pinned the f we pinned the finger on him. Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't uh, have to be here now, now wouldn't we? Officer Marshall, tell us the court what you did. All of it. All right. It seems the time has come. Marshall's confession. Here we go. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. And managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, why? Yeah, but why was there so much blood? So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? That's a good question. Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's, he's the donor. Hmm. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. Marshall's confession. All right. Well, this is... Let it die, and by, and by let it die, I'm assuming he means SL9. Once you say it, you mean... Do you even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. If it was going com to completely end with the transferal that day... Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only that case's lead detectives can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. Ah, so you, in other words, you dre you snuck in to get a good look at the evidence. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why I... Okay. I know. I think I know why. There's another... There's another name with the... With the last... There's another name with the last name Marshall that I'm assuming is his dad. Hmm. Why did you put... Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman st started filing out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office parking lot. That it, the ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean, the fingerprint activated lock, of course. 
No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under no cer normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. But he could because it was a rubber glove just happened to get stuck in that door. That means... Detective Goodman must have opened the locker for before Officer Marshall. Must have, but then again, we never see him in there, in there that day. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. You pulled the knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off? Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only plan on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins... Certainly is a one-in-a-million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be to be shown his ID. I'll have to think of a little more about his raise this year. Hmm. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he threw himself at me, and I ended up cutting his sli him slightly. I'm sorry it had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm. So you knocked Officer Meekins out and... So the knife he uses for... I managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on camera. So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into, into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make a difference, though. That's it. The security tape is erased every six hours. If all had gone to plan, no footage would have been left. However... You're bloodied your coat and your struggle with Officer and your struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is on that day. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. Hmm. But but the blood I found at the scene clearly indicates a crime took place. What are you, blind? The victim shown on that tape is me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, I know I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. That's suspicious as hell. What? Mr. Edgeworth, what are, where is this evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. That's suspicious. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer. That, that is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. Yes, it will! It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? Your dad was a victim, I think. Your either your dad or your brother or somebody, but either way. But the case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? Hmm. That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for his crimes. One thing I can say for sure is he deserved his sentence. If I remember the Joe Dark case, it involved serial murders, didn't it? I didn't, don't intend to complain about how it turned out, but there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one will ever talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's why I'm trying to find out. Hmm. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think is his real reason is. I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I'd better take another look at the files. I, ha I have an idea. I have an idea. I know, I think I know why he did it. There's a there's another name in there. Neil Marshall. Present. Objection. Officer Marshall, 
I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name, Marshall, is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victim in a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard the name. Two years ago. He received the same Aussie Prosecutor Award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors Award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil, Mar Neil Marshall. He handled the, handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. I figured. His brother or his dad or something. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, the, the, the then deputy, deputy chief of police. Hmm. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark. My brother fought Joe Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was he was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least, according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? There's more to my brother's death than, than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, if you, you can't fool me. Hmm. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with his resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Hmm. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. Oh, jeez. The, the things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. Exactly the same time the murder at the prosecutor's office. This fake murder was going on at the police department. Yeah, but then why is there so much blood? Chance? It's gotta be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime... That means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Or so it's claimed. Which, in turn, means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Elena Skye. But, but wait. A verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Which is why we've examined the incident at the police department today. But, there's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remain the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me, this boy's got the draw on you, partner. Hmm. All the mysteries at the police department have been resolved. No doubt about it. Our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lena Sky. And the testimony of one Miss Angel Star is completely uncontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Oh, God. I arrest my case. Yeah, but that's still... It seems this trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Oh, God damn it. Why, why, why? Disproving the alleged murder at the police department. Hmm. There's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera tape really was fake. But I didn't realize... That would end up proving Lena guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. The court finds the defendant. Oh, hold it. Oh. Hi. Your Honor. Wait. Hi, Emma. What are you doing up there on the witness stand? Emma? The defense has an objection. A scientific objection. Right? 
What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright, are you, are, the, are you this girl's guardian? In a, in a manner of speaking, yes. Your Honor, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor, all I'm asking is for a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. All right. I... I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it. The names of both Sky's sisters were in that file. But that's when I fi figured it out. I mean, was Officer Mar what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprints had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker. But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. So you did find something. Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Hmm. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of the blood are here are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If, any can, if anyone can save Lance, you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regard to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Uh... It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lena will be... Please, answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Y yes, Your Honor. If I, if I, if, if ever I need to concentrate, it's now. Hmm. What could be wrong with that hamper on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? Well? Well, let's look at the other handprint. The other handprint is... Fi that's a left hand, right? Yeah, that's a... Pretty sure that's a left hand. No, that's that's a different... That's a, that's a completely different print. At least I think it is. Hmm. I think I should object. Objection. This handprint left at the crime scene. Clearly shows a contradiction. Alright. The only thing that seems clear is you're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? The unstable jar. There's a huge piece of it missing. As they say back west, even a blind man can hit with a buckshot. That is, so long as he's facing the general direction. It seems Mr. Wright's not sure which direction to face. It's no use. The more evidence there is, the greater the chance of me being wrong. Just calm down, Mr. Wright. Try and remember what the evidence room was like on the day of the crime. What is it What is it that bothers me about this blood, blood mark? Please allow me another chance, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Wait, I know what it is. I 
I know what it is. There's a big mark on the... I forgot! I forgot! I pointed this out! There's a big-ass mark on his face! There's a handprint there! Present! What about this piece of plywood? The blue badger? Mascot of the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So... So, watch what happens when we put him back in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? <laughs> That's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a hamper at this spot on the locker. What? That's a good question. That's a good point. So that means, uh, just what exactly does that mean? It means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably de de deniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma, on that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badger to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a hamper on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Just one moment. I was I will not allow such far fetched balderdash in my courtroom. It may sound far fetched, Your Honor, but is it that's the only possible explanation. On February twenty first, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once but twice. But but how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time... Some had bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been. Oh, it had to have been... Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. That's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claim. All right, we've, we've gotten steam back now, ladies and gentlemen. The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proved to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found in the locker. So then, assuming this murder you purport, purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proved when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? To summarize the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place at that in that evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well. Then tell us. When did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgewood said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? Hmm. There's only one piece of evidence I can think of. Hmm. The only piece of evidence I can think of is is this. It's the only thing that I can see that makes sense. Because it had to have been before Meekins came in. If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card. Oh! The ID card record! Officer Meekins brought the Blue Badger panel into the evidence room at, let's see here, 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 4.40. Ah! Ah! Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done? I never would have figured you hadn't the nerve, boy. 
Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out and it could have couldn't have been me. Hmm. No, but I ain't getting it. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminal test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Miggins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away. By the real murderer. I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. Hmm. That would mean... The crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. There's only one other card number remaining. All sevens. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with seven, 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 yeah, seven. All sevens. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number is all sevens. That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of that ID card. At least that present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number belongs to someone with the rank of captain or higher. Someone who is so-called executive officer. We don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous. Just how... I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There's one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive is accepted. An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. Hmm. I'd take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes? No, not to you. To her, the defendant sitting over there. You own little ex your own little executive. But Lelena? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we've looked up her ID number. And it's not 777s. Don't play with me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident. Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence? Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for that trial. At the time, we, occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. Hmm. Interesting. But, Lena, I became a prosecutor in order to, to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say that you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lena, even if it involved forging evidence. Wait, so was it a fake evidence that got him arrested? See, that's what I'm talking about. No, no! Outrage, order, 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 order! So, wait, what? Lena's remarks caused such a stir. The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of, of the trial would have to wait until the following day. Well, then! So, there was false evidence, I think. So, okay, so... From what I concluded, 
we determined that the murder, we determined that the that there that there was in fact a murder that took place at the evidence room, but also we determined that Jake Marshall was there as well, but he was part of a separate incident. So we proved that Jake Marshall wasn't the murderer, but we also proved that he was trying to steal evidence related to SL nine, and we also determined that that um Jake Marshall would have been in there as well, which is interest well that we've also determined that bruce goodman would have been in there not jake marshall but that's interesting and also so it's so they forged evidence so the case was never actually solved technically speaking they didn't solve the case but they just had they just were able to for forge evidence to get to get what they needed so this so what does that mean does that mean that the case was faulty i am not entirely sure but they i think there is there is a bit of an issue there. There's definitely a discrepancy there. So we're going to be investigating that next time. But in any case, I think I'm going to leave this episode here. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And also check out my Patreon in the description below as well. It's only a couple bucks a month. It really helps me out. And you guys get access to a bunch of cool perks that are my way of saying thanks. So be sure to check those out in the description below as well. But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.